Hello there. So nice to have you here on a night like this when we can share a dream like I had at Quincy College as the night grows late. Sense of community was and is the light of the world. Won't you join us? Back at Quincy College in the 1960s, many of the teachers were Franciscan priests and Brother Cleet was the business manager. His example shone like a light. The school was trying to teach us the art of living. Brother Cleet did that well. I sold ads for the school newspaper and brought the paper from a loss to a profit. Brother Cleet was impressed. The editor asked me to stop selling ads. We had more ads than articles. We could talk to each other like that. The sense of community I experienced there made it a special place. I have longed to replicate it elsewhere. This video covers academic research validating natural law of intrinsic psychological needs. It is a natural law that all human beings are born with feelings. Our feelings tell us if we are on target or off target as a human being. Feelings are hardwired into the human chassis. As a computer analogy, feelings become part of our operating system. Loquate, a community for peace, has done research on primary values that affect our feelings. The first primary value is doing that which is truly in the best interests of others. The second primary value is attaining a goal. The third primary value is operating in an area of meaningful expansion for yourself. That is, your interiorly preferred work. In summary, Richard M. Ryan and Edward L. Deasy, both of the University of Rochester, published in American Psychologists, cited by 14,168. The findings have led to the postulate of three innate psychological needs, competence, autonomy, and relatedness, which when satisfied yield enhanced self-motivation and mental health, and when thwarted, lead to diminished motivation and well-being. In summary, natural law supports the three primary values. Relatedness, doing that which is truly in the best interests of others. Competence, attaining a goal. And autonomy, operating in an area of meaningful expansion for ourselves. The natural law, or rule, is this. If one or more of the values is present, and the experience does not go against any of the other values, you will feel good. If the experience goes against one or more of the values, you will feel bad. Now let's apply this research to everyday life. Code is the identity experience we take on. For example, let's say at Hospital A, Code 1 had a specific meaning to doctors, nurses, and staff. For example, a patient is dying. Each member of the team takes on their role. Each team member quickly jumps into their role because of code. They think fast because of code. Another term for code is norms. A norm is an expected form of behavior from a group member in order to stay a member of that group. Everyone has code. Code is hardwired deep into our system for survival. The problem is that code can be good or bad. Back at Quincy College, I wondered what made a leader. I knew I was not a leader. I wanted to be close to leaders just to understand them. So I became involved in student activities and with those I saw as leaders. As an observer, some leaders could be good or bad, or good and bad at different times. Obviously, good code or bad code may be placed on a child early on in a family setting. Membership in a family is survival. Membership as a youth in a group is survival, whether it be drug or gang member or house of worship. Membership in a group as an adult in a horrific war setting is survival. What if Hospital A policy suddenly mandated its doctors in a Code 1 to not respond to any patient over 90 and save lives only for patients under 90? 
the team member would still have a check or control or feedback loop. Their feelings. They would immediately know if they felt good or bad about the new code. If code goes against satisfying innate psychological needs, you will feel bad. Checking bad code for primary values is rudimentary and available to all thanks to the academic research noted above. Breaking down the bad code may be done in relation to the primary values from Loquate to determine precisely the reason why you feel the way you do. Back at Quincy College, Brother Cleet taught no formal courses. He just lived his life with good code. He was famously loved in the business office by all who knew him. Unfortunately, if a Brother Cleet is not around, we can all be swept up by bad code. We can all be terrorists. We don't become a terrorist until bad code hurting or harming others gets adopted as an identity experience. Every person who adopts bad code as an identity experience hurting or harming others needs forgiveness and mercy. We had a system for justice back at Quincy College. It consisted of a student welfare board of about seven faculty chaired by the Dean of Students and a student representative. Each had an equal vote. The student facing discipline would choose one student representative from among four available. I couldn't understand why students in trouble almost always chose me as their student representative. I thought it was luck of a good outcome early on. I would tell the student that I could not get them more than they deserved, but I would fight to make sure they wouldn't get worse than they deserved. But I told them they had to tell me the truth. Then I would share their story with the welfare board, along with my recommendation and reasoning. The welfare board almost always followed my recommendation. It just happened that way. Back then, bad code could result in expulsion. And for men, my biggest constituency, expulsion meant almost certain draft during the Vietnam War. Having mercy and forgiveness was a blessing. The exception proves the point. One student had violated a rule calling for expulsion. The welfare board enforced the rule, but the college president gave the student a pardon. We formed a charismatic cross small group out of the welfare board. We suffered for the other who hurt or harmed us, and we still love the other, doing that which is truly in their best interests. Then we drew the other to us, and we had joy. In my last year at Quincy, I was asked to carry an envelope to announce the homecoming queen. As I walked across the dance floor, the assembly gave out cat calls and cheers, calling my nickname, Toad. Later that evening, a friend came up to me, shaking his head, and said, I don't believe it. What, I asked. He said, You got more applause than the queen. We both laughed. Later that night in bed, in the quiet of my room, before I went to sleep, I reflected. I had wanted to understand leaders. Now I realized I was one. That good code and the student welfare board had become an identity experience for me.